Hey, uh, my name is Eugene Marinelli, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Blend. I'm joined here today by Nivi Jayasekar, one of our um, engineering leads, and um, we're going to talk today about how we're making, uh, how we're improving the home borrowing experience. So, if you've purchased a home already, you probably know how painful the process can be. Um, if you haven't, let me tell you a bit about how it works today. Um, first, it's uh, it's very paper driven, so. Um, we have an example of a, a complete loan file. It can be hundreds of pages long. Um, the amount of information that you need to provide to get a mortgage is is huge. Um, and uh, um, yeah, so there, it may involve going to various accounts, um, pulling information manually, um, exporting it into PDFs, emailing it, uh, sometimes even faxing it. So um, generally a very painful process. Uh, next, there's endless back and forth with the lender. So um, once you've actually completed the application, you may be asked questions uh, about transactions from from years ago. Um, you may be asked to provide inf inf uh, information that you weren't uh, initially asked for. And um, yeah, just it can take weeks to actually get your loan decision. <clears throat> um, it lacks transparency, so at any given point in the loan, you'll have very little idea of whether or not your loan's gonna be accepted. And finally, it's very manual, meaning um, as a borrower, uh, you may not be able to make progress on the loan except during business hours. And as a lender, um, you may end up making mistakes and uh, certain mistakes can even become compliance violations. So obviously very important, um, you know, it can lead to a lot of issues. So at Blend, what we're doing is making the process a lot more automated, a lot more efficient. And um, today we're working with several top lenders to, uh, with borrowers across the country to um, improve the process. So today we're gonna to talk about our bar, our <clears throat> how we've solved this problem, starting with our borrower experience. So I'll run through a demo of our app. Um, we'll talk about how we handle borrower data sources, so things like connecting your bank accounts, um, how we handle document uploads, and then uh, Nivi is going to talk about our loan engine and how we have built centralized rules into, into the platform. So let's jump into a demo of the app. You'll see here that um, coming back to this, this uh, loan file, what we've done is take in the requirements for a loan and map them into a simple uh, set of, of workflows that are very digestible. So um, I'll just walk through a few steps, give you an idea of how that works. Um, you'll see that it's broken down into you know, simple workflows. You have your assets workflow, your income workflow, um, and then a few other ones. And as you complete the application, as we learn more about the borrower, we add, uh, we can dynamically update the uh, the information that we're requesting. So here's um, a few steps of the workflow. Um, you, you know, you're entering basic information like your purchase price, you know, whether you're working with real estate agent. Some of the fields can be omitted um, in case you don't have them yet. And uh, yeah, so it's it's a pretty self-guided process. Um, and uh, as as you're filling out the application, what we're doing is filling in the mortgage application in the back in the back end, and um, yeah, guiding you through the, the application so that you're only providing the minimal amount of information that you need for <clears throat> um, to complete the loan. Uh, one big part of improving the application experience is going from a world where you have to log into your bank, each of your bank accounts and export transactions um, and send them to your lender. Uh, instead, I know what we can do is give the borrower the ability to connect the accounts directly. So I'll walk through how that, how that looks here. Um, so first you select your institution, uh, you enter your login, Enter any um, 
multi-factor authentication questions. And at this point, Blend can import your assets and accounts, and uh, the lender can use them for, for things later on. In building this, there were a few, a few big challenges uh, to, you know, to getting a high degree of coverage and reliability. One was figuring out how to, uh, well, for, we decided to do this by working with multiple different account providers and abstract, creating an abstraction layer on top of them. Um, so one issue there was figuring out the core set of capabilities that a, uh, a financial institution provider would need to give us. Um, this was not trivial because different providers are, have different quirks. Um, for instance, one provider would, uh, while pulling transactions, surface uh, a multi-factor authentication prompt. So it's a fairly complex and stateful um, flow to get all the information in some cases. The other challenge was figuring out how to take the institutions that are provided by each bank account provider and map them into a single canonical set of institutions that, the, uh, that we show to the borrower. Um, so ultimately, what we're doing is figuring out based on the name of the institution, based on other metadata, what institution it maps to in a canonical data set. Um, to give you an idea of the flow here, we have, uh, as a borrower, you're, you're fetching out the institutions, you're searching for the one that you want, um, we're figuring out where, uh, what login credentials are needed, guiding the user through the login, um, the any multi-factor authentication, and then finally pulling the accounts and transactions into a store that we manage, at which point we can do things like generate an asset statement to include in, in an underwriting package. <clears throat> so when we're not able to pull transactions in a structured form, we, uh, we fall back to a manual docu document upload, but we don't just stop with uh, document upload uh, and passing it along to the lender. We actually apply OCR to the document and try to extract information that can be used for, um, one, for actually filling in the, the loan application. So, for instance, in the case of W-2s, we can automatically parse out the, uh, the year of the W-2, the name of the employer, and in other cases, we can at least identify what type of document we have. Um, so based on the words in the document, we can uh, say whether it's a W-2 or a pay stub, and then tell the user, um, tell the user whether they've uploaded the wrong type of document. And uh, eventually what we want to be able to do is allow the user to provide a whole set of documents and automatically map those to requirements. So next, Nivy is going to talk about our loan engine. Thank you. So as Eugene was talking about earlier, this is the loan file that a normal loan uh, data, the documents that a borrower would need to provide for one mortgage. Uh, this is by nature very complex. Some of it doesn't need to be, and we do a good job of reducing that redundancy through the borrower um, experience and also connectivity. Uh, another part of it is that, you know, because of the way lenders use this information, it has to be complex. Well, one, they need to have, they need to fill out a government form, a 1003. And so they need all the information for that. But also they have underwriting processes where they have to validate the data that they receive and um, also, you know, and sh check whether the person is allowed, uh, should be receiving the loan in the first place or not. And because of this, they have a lot of existing infrastructure that we need to support using other file types such as Fannie or Mismo. And so our data model is very, uh, has to be complex. And so the way we do this is basically there's uh, several key parties, uh, the application data, property data, borrower data that we centrally store in our data model. Uh, this is useful because w one, we're really trying to figure out and distill what information is needed for the mortgage application, but also it's it allows us to add intelligence to the application. How do we only ask the borrowers the questions that they really need to be answering, and how do we source that information up to them appropriately at the right moment? And so that really goes down to centralized rules, which I'll, give, I'll start by giving you a demo, and then we'll go into how it works on the technology side in a bit. 
All right, so I will go ahead and um, give me a second. Uh, I'm just going to go in and sign up as a bar. So let's log in from the lender side first and take a look at the application template. This is a super um, permission role. I'm just going to go log in. All right, so from here, uh, Eugene kind of went through a full mortgage application. I created a smaller version so that we can really look at the intelligence component. So this is an income only application. There are three requirements on here, income, W-2, and pay stubs. And so, uh, this is basically the only things that the borrower will ever have to fill out in this application. And so now I'm going to go ahead and log in as a borrower on this loan, and we can go ahead and see um, what that looks like. Give me one second. Uh, let me just get the URL so that they can sign in with that. All right. Uh, Cool. And so you'll start off with pretty much like the similar process where you sign up. And, uh, right? Uh, so in getting started, we're going to go in and add two borrowers Jane. Uh, all right, cool. Uh, and so while this kind of loads in, I'm going to also go into the lender view of the loan as well. And so this is the one that I've just created. As you can see, we start off with exactly one requirement, which is income. And that's what, something that both John and Jane can now submit. And so we're going to go ahead and give Jane, uh, Jane is going to go and say that she has an employer, and her employer is uh, ABC Company. And so I'm just going to go fill in the details for that. And when she does that, because she has an employer, and now that it makes sense for her to also have a W-2 and pay stub, which you can only have if you have an employer that you're currently, um, and so basically she has the two requirements that are now there in the application template for uh, that employer, ABC. And so now if John goes in and says, I don't have an employer, you'll, you'll notice that, um, actually, so he does that he doesn't have an employer. Um, Uh, you'll notice that only if the person says they have an employer will they actually get the um, request, essentially. So give me a second. Uh, cool. So in Jane, we just finished an employer. We say, no, I'm all done. Uh, John, we go in and we say we have an employer. Uh, it's the same one. Uh, they fill it out. Um, and he's, he can say, yeah, I want to add another requirement. And now if he chooses that he has an independent contractor position, he wouldn't have the same requirements. He wouldn't also be asked for the W-2s and pay stubs. And so the way this really works is uh, there, when the borrower interacts with the application, uh, they send data packets to the borrower. And this uh, data packets are uh, handled by the data model and uh, trigger requirements on the borrower. And this is useful because you can use those requirements for also compliance-based things. Uh, and so that's a little bit of a demo of how our product really works. Uh, and if you liked any of the technology aspects that um, we talked about so far, um, please come check us out. Uh, the other important thing is that this is a problem that for the most part, mortgages has not been uh, tackled by Silicon Valley. And as a result, the technology in mortgages is outdated. Blend is solving this problem, and we're in production with several top lenders. Uh, if anything we said was interesting, come check out our booth or um, email us at eugene or nibby at blendlabs.com. Thank you.